I'm Doris Wyanath, and I'm going to talk with you today about the music ministry at Glen Oak Christian Church. Um, I'm going to give you a few points of history first of all, just in case you don't know. Peoria was founded in 1845, and that very same year, Central Christian Church became a chartered as a church in downtown Peoria. Now in those days, the bluff area had not been cleared and it was just not developed in any way yet. So in 1914, after the people were starting to inhabit on the east bluff, the west bluff, center bluff, every coming up the hill, so to speak, there was a, a group of neighbors that decided that they, they needed their children to have a church type experience and they founded a Sunday school in their home and they kept inviting more, and it ended up that they had five homes that were being used, and they were having Sunday school for the children. Of course, a few parents came along, and so through that time, they, they started talking about the need for a, a church or a mission. So in 1916, they called it the East Bluff Mission, and the church, that group of people contacted the school, Glen Oak School, which was located at the corner of Atlantic and Republic on the East Bluff. They asked to permission to use that building so that they could come together and have a larger Sunday school, and it started growing. The, the people from Central Christian Church realized that this was a place for establishing another church possibly, and, and these were people from Central Christian Church that started this Sunday School mission. So in 1919, they bought the land at the corner of Atlantic and Republic and the little schoolhouse that was on it because the city was going to build a larger schoolhouse at the corner of Wisconsin and Fry Avenue. Which, was, which happened. Now, interesting to me that Glen Oak Christian Church was not chartered until 1923, but in 1920, these people who were meeting at the school and always including some songs and teaching the children the Christian songs, established a choir so that the adults had a commonality that they could come together and do something practice the choir and so forth. And they must have been quite good because they started being involved to sing other places for other events. In 1923 then, the charter was signed for Glen Oak Christian Church and the property became the future home of where we are today. <laughs> they tore down that school that they had been meeting in and got permission to meet in the new school while their building was built, which I found very interesting. They bought the land and the school and then asked permission to come and use the other building. The, the church foundation was built, the, the basement and foundation, and in 1925 they started having services in that basement as they continued working, and a lot of the work was done by the parishioners. So that's all I'm going to tell about that church building, except to tell you that a very sad thing happened in 1946, and that building burned. They started rebuilding in 1947, and by 1957, they had paid off all of the debt, the building was full every Sunday, and they needed more room so they embarked on building the education wing, which is now off the parking lot with the tri triple doors where we many of us come in each Sunday. All of this time, they kept singing and, and praising the Lord in song, and that choir kept building and building. I came to this church. My husband and I were married in January of 1959. We came here on Monday, Thursday for the services, and we've been coming back here ever since. In the 1960s, the education building had been completed. 
The Sunday schools were full, that every room over there had Sunday school classes in it with the exception of one had a nursery. We had grown so much that on the membership list there were 1,300 people and there were 900 to 1,000 that were attending every Sunday so that this sanctuary would not accommodate all of the people that were attending in two services, which had been always, they had had two services in this building. So they went to three services and we had a choir for each service. We had the chapel choir that was the high school age sang at the second service, the chancel choir, which is what we now remain having, sang at the third service and they instituted a Cairo choir that sang at the first service. So at eight o'clock in the morning, we had all of the Cairoers that had rehearsed earlier in the week, and they came and sang and had their own choir, and we had about 15 in that choir. And that was my first introduction into being a part of the music ministry of Glen Oak. When you joined a church in those days, the minister contacted the minister from your prior church. And because as a teenager, I had worked with a cherub choir in my home church, that information came to this church. And when they needed the third choir director, they decided to ask for a volunteer and I was asked. <laughs> They didn't know if I could do anything, but they knew that I had done it before, and so I was invited, and we did fine. Um, that only lasted for about two years, and then in the 60s, there, were, there was unrest in our community, but there also were a lot of people that were moving out to the suburban areas and to neighboring towns so that the crowd that was attending could be held in the two services. So that was cut back and we no longer had the three services. In the 70s, the Agape Singers, which was a group of teenagers, and they loved to sing praise songs and play the guitars, and they formed, and <clears throat> they would sit right here on the chancel steps, and the guitarist at least, and the others usually stood. But, but they became a very part of the music, important part of the music ministry because they were young and vital and enthusiastic. And then as we progressed through the 70s, there were touring groups that would go, whether they be young or choirs or whatever, and we hosted a bell choir from Texas that was on tour. And after having them be here, and most of the people that attended that evening for their concert had never seen or heard a bell choir before. Someone thought that would be a great idea for us to institute as part of our uh, program here at Glen Oak. And they do made a donation to the Living Gifts and Memorials for us to buy bells. It was discussed at the board meeting and so forth, and it was favorably looked upon with a lot of limitations. The main one was that it could not come from operating funds. So permission was given for us to have a campaign and ask for funds to buy bells. We did that and in 1978 they were, they were ordered on September 1st and on Thanksgiving Eve they had arrived and we played for the Thanksgiving Eve service and we have continued to play ever since then. In the 80s, they became very popular. We had played at some nursing home for their residents, and they have an activity director that, that invites people and so forth at these homes, and all of those activity directors get to together once a month to discuss things that are working for them and other ideas because the same old thing all the time gets boring. And at one of these meetings, they, someone evidently said something very complimentary because the phone started ringing and for the next month, 
we had a concert every week at some nursing home. And then, of course, families would come to see what was going on. And then we started going to other churches. And we were busy bees during the 80s and 90s. In 97, we were invited to play with the Civic Peoria Civic Chorale as part of their Christmas holiday concert. And at that concert, they also had invited the ballet. And we and the, the choir accompanied the dancers. And that was quite an exciting event. During the 90s, we, we found out that there were other bell choirs that, that were also in the community, and we combined with two others, Peoria Heights Congregational and First Baptist, and the three choirs would put on large concerts, and we rotated which church we were playing in, and that went on for about four or five years. And then things change, and, and choirs change, in 1993, Bobby James and I from here went with a group of bell ringers to Europe and we played at Oberammergau, Germany, and that was a real thrill. We went with someone that is well respected and nationally known and this was the International Music Society. They also had a choir that sang there, and since I was singing in the choir here, I signed up, I'd sing in the choir. And that was the, one of the most thrilling events I've ever been a part of because we actually sang on the stage where the Oberammergau Passion Play is presented. For me personally, the music ministry has made a huge difference in my life, and I would not want it to to ever change. There are many opportunities that if you let it be known that you have a little interest or a little knowledge that you can develop, the music ministry is one of those. And I would invite everyone to let it be known if you're in, in, interested in singing, in ringing, if you play a musical instrument, there will be a way that you can add to our worship and praise at Glen Oak if you will only let us know. So let this be something that you look back on and see as a bit of an education about the music, but also as a huge invitation to ring, sing, and be pray give praise to God.